Welcome back to your 10. This is lesson 5 of generating electricity. We're looking at how we move electricity around the country. So please, if you can put at the top, lesson 5, date, underline with the ruler, please. And then let's look to see what it is we're learning. We're doing or completing pages 26 to 30. There's two main parts. First, the advantages and disadvantages of using different voltages of electricity at different points in the national grid. And the use of step up and step down transformers using the transmission of electricity from the power station. So, firstly, I'd like you to read that paragraph. Just pause the video and read the paragraph. What you should have learned from that is this crucial part here. A high current flowing through a wire wastes energy as heat. That, that, that's how we get heat out of electrical appliances such as hair dryers, straighteners, toasters. It's where we put a high current through a wire to get heat. But in this case, we don't want heat. We, we don't want to be losing heat energy when we move in electricity around the country. So how do we overcome this problem? Firstly, we're going to look at this equation again. Something we learnt in our first topic. And what it's telling us is that power is current times voltage. And why are we learning about this now when we're talking about moving electricity? Well, what we want is to get as much power, we want to increase the amount of power to move from one part of the country to another. And in order to do that, we want these numbers here to be high for the power to be high. But the problem's this. We want the current to be low. So how do we overcome that? Well, logically, we want this voltage to be as high as possible. More on that later. As I drawn to the right hand side, and I've said we've learned this in the previous topic, lesson eight electrical circuit. So that's it. this equation is nothing new. You've already used it. Let's look now at this particular bulb and the specifications that come with it. What you've got to do is use that information in order to answer the question. A quick look at the questions. It's question one and question two. Question one asks, what is the power rating of this bulb? So you need to look above. It can be confusing because you've got two different values. What this is telling us here is not the actual power rating of the bulb, but the equivalent of the old style tungsten filament bulb. The actual power rating is this, it's 13 watts, one three, 13 watts. Then what you need to do is work out the current for question two, work out the current flowing through this bulb when it's plugged into mains electricity in the UK and in the USA. Over here, is the information you're going to need for that. You need to understand that the mains voltage in the UK is 230 volts and in USA is 110 volts. You'll understand in a moment the advantage of the 230 volts main supply in the UK. 
you need to remember that value 230 volts as well for a GCSE exam 230 to 30 well, however you want to remember it it's something you need to make sure you do know you don't need to know the American one but you need to use it for this question I have made a quick start for you there to work out the current in the bulb in the UK you divide the power by the voltage so you have a go now when you've done um, so pause the video when you've done both press play if you mark your own now so I'll go over the answer the power was 13 watts and it's 13 in in, in both so you put 13 there because that's the power that comes out of the bulb the difference between the two is this you have 230 volts in the UK and 110 in America so at this point you're going to need your calculator 13 divided by 230 I'll have to round that to two decimal places that's 0.06 0.06 amps remember the units and if we do the equivalent now for USA 13 divided by 110 now we've got a much larger value of 0.1 2 0.12 you can see that's double the current required to flow in the wires therefore more current more wasted energy next page it says you should have found out that even though the power out from the bulb stays the same, more current flows through the wires in the US than in the UK. To reduce the wasted heat energy lost through the wires, American ele electricians use thicker but more expensive wiring circuits. Now see if you understand this underneath. So a 250 kilowatt wind turbine, that's the power P, wrong pen. Right, so that's P, the power. And remember, the power is current times voltage. Could generate either 10 amps at 25,000 or 1 amp at 250,000. Note this. If you were to multiply the current in the first instant, 10 times 25,000, you would get that 250 kilowatts. And you could do the same with these numbers here. But with those values, the current is 10 times less. Both of which then would produce a power of 250 kilowatts. The major power stations in the UK are connected together by part of the national grid operating at this is a massive voltage lock 400 kilo volts just remember anything over 50 volts can kill you and that's called the super grid where the electrical energy wasted as heat works out at about one percent so it's a very small percentage the part of the national grid that connects homes and small businesses to the super grid operates at 275 kilo volts or 132 kilovolts if the whole grid operated at a lower voltage of 25 kilovolts the electrical energy wasted as heat would be about 40 percent that's huge 40 times larger can you imagine how much then we'd pay for our, our electricity probably 40 times more therefore electricity is transmitted around the country at very high voltage here it is, this is what you need to remember, very high voltage, 
but they compensate and that compensates for the very low current to minimize the energy wasted as heat. Underneath then we've got a diagram and you can I'll rub this out in a sec and I just want to show you where the, where the flow of energy is. It comes out of the power station, goes along the pylons and eventually look it gets to gets to us. But on that journey the voltage changes level a number of times so that when it's traveling through these pylons here we want to minimize the amount of heat energy that's being wasted along these wires your next activity is to transform that information from here to here underneath and i've made a start for you what i've done look is I've just started on the, the first part of the journey, the power station, where the electricity is 25 kilovolts there. And the next part are these things. I'm going to be learning more about these next. Step up transformers. Effectively, what the step up transformer is, is something that increases the voltage level which is what we want and it increases it to 400 kilovolts before it goes along the pylons so i'll just read above so you know what you're doing use the diagram of the national grid transmission system to label up the diagram below include voltages in volts for the power station cables between the pylons and the house so i've made a start there for you but before you go any further let's just contextualize what it is you're doing again and if i click on the on the power station and we've learned about the power station what we're learning about today is what happens in these things called step up transformers and how they both play the part the power station producing the electricity the step up transformer look increasing the voltage to 450,000 volts and then we'll be learning what happens before it gets into our homes you can see that this software is slightly old because on the right hand side of the screen it's got 240 volts this is about 240 volts that used to be the uk mains voltage now it's been dropped down to 230 volts 230. so what you need to do then is take the information from above and show it at the bottom, bottom of page 27. I've just added a few parts to the bottom of 27 to help you simplify it. You'll notice on the diagram above there's talk of substations and so on. You don't need to know about those. What you do need to know are the step down, what the step up and step down transformers do. So those are the only sections that you need to complete and just remember that you end up with 230 volts at the end so do that as a self-assessment press pause press play when complete through so two separate step downs transformers one here and one here it takes the voltage from 400 then down to 33 kilovolt and then down to 230 volts check your answers <clears throat> against those shown on the video at the bottom of the screen
Okay, check yours against that slight glitch there. Apologies. Pause the check. When checked, press play. On the next page, there's some more information about these transforms, the two different types. All you've got to know, really, that a transformer is known as, or can be thought of as a voltage, voltage changer. They are not robots in disguise, they are voltage changers. They move, they change the voltage from one level to another. The step up variety increases, and the step down transformer decreases the voltage. Please read those two paragraphs and answer questions one to four below. When completed, you guessed it, press play. I'll give you now the the answers, the questions one to four. I'll give you the verbal answers and you can check them against yours. So firstly, what is the difference between a step up and step down transformer? Well, a step up transformer increases voltage and a step down transformer decreases voltage. Question two, what type of transformer is placed between a power station and pylons? The answer is a step up transformer is placed between a power station and pylons. You can give the reason. So the because is we need to increase the voltage. Question three. Electricity is sent through power cables at high, high voltage but low current. To reduce heat loss to the surroundings and therefore have a more efficient system. I just took some word in from the, the text here. So I've, I've looked at these two sentences and that's what you do in comprehension of course, isn't it? Step down transformers, something current and something voltage. Well, what the step down transformers do, they increase voltage, increase the voltage, because, no, mistake, step down. Down means the voltage goes down. Decrease, silly me. And if they decrease the voltage, they increase the current. Remember what I said? To keep that power the same. <clears throat> if one goes down, the, the other goes up. Make sure, please, that you, with the red pen, of course, self-assess, tick if correct, and correct, change, update, correct, if required. Now, on the next couple of pages, we'll be learning a bit more about how these transformers work. You don't need to know the how. This is just additional information. So just to be clear, this additional information, I shall put a red arrow, sorry, a green arrow, down. Oh, it's actually purple. Let's try that again. So from here, all the way down to here, you don't actually need to know for your GCSE. Right. Now I'm going to leave answers to this in the video. But you're very welcome, of course, to fast forward on to page 30, the final page of the booklet. So here we go. 
Transformers come in two types, we know about that. Step up or step down. Transformers contain an iron core with two separate insulated coil windings. These are called the primary in coils and secondary out coils. The ratio of the coils between the primary and secondary tells us what type of transformer it is. Let's look at this example here. Okay, we've got um, 100 turns on the primary coil. 100 turns. We've got 200 volts going in. And because we've got 400 turns on the secondary coil, we're going to increase by a factor of 4. So 200 becomes 800. I'm going to add those in now here. I'll do I'll do a couple and you can do a couple. So I think we had 100 going to 400 200 volts going in 800 volts coming out and that would therefore be a step up because you've increased the voltage. I'll, I'll do one more. I'll do a step down. I'll go back to this look and you see this is a step step down transformer so we're going from 400 to 100 200 so if we've got 400 to 100 that means this the number of turns is decreased by a factor of four so 200 has to be divided by four which gives you 50. went from 250 and I can't remember now the number of turns 400 to 100 there we go 400 to 100 I'll put a couple in oh I forgot it's a step down transformer I'll do a couple for you to try Okay, so just as an additional bit piece of work here, look. Uh, question three: two hundred to four hundred windings. The voltage. I'll leave that one for you to do. And then question four: you can see the numbers there yourself. So just pause the videos at the right points and press play as as needed. Okay, I'm going to write the answers in now. Pause again if, if you need to. We're going from 200 to 400. That means it's increased by a factor of 2. So 12 times 2, 24 volts. It's a step up transformer. And finally, we've got 120 to 30. That's decreasing by a factor of 4. 400 divided by 4 is 25 volts. So that's a step down transformer because you can see the voltage has decreased. So the conclusion for a step-up transformer, if you treble the number of wires from the primary to the secondary coil, then the voltage increases by a factor of three. Treble means by three. In a transformer, sorry, a step-down transformer, if the primary coil has 34, turns with a voltage that drops from 8 to 4 so that's half the voltage we'll have to have half the number of turns in the secondary then the secondary coil would have will have 14 divided sorry 34 divided by 2 17 turns final page in the booklet is uh, an opportunity to improve your written answers to a typical six mark question you may come across in an exam. Now my advice is always to look at these type of questions and see if you can split them down to make it easier and to make sure you you, you maximize your marks. So what's it asking? It's asking here look electricity can be transmitted moved either using overhead cables or underground cables 
outline the advantages and disadvantages using both types of cables. So, split it into four paragraphs. Paragraph one, advantages of overhead cables. Paragraph two, disadvantages. Paragraph three, advantages. Paragraph four, disadvantages. Where do you get that knowledge from? Well, two places. You can either look on the internet or I've just taken this screenshot from the internet and for underground cables there's a list of disadvantages and advantages here so for example an advantage of underground cable better general appearance you can't see them no visual pollution here's a list of advantages of using overhead so main advantages they are easier to repair and a disadvantage they cause visual pollution. Often a disadvantage of one will be an advantage of the other. Visual pollution being an example. Try and get at least two advantages and disadvantages in each of those paragraphs. Well, that's it for this lesson. Just complete that task and we'll see you in the next topic. Bye for now.